Blame and resentment have to go. Hello, this is Shores of Infinity with your host Chris speaking. I recently watched a video by a guru called Daya and he said blame and resentment have to go. That's the basis. Otherwise nothing is possible. He's right, of course, but that's the problem with most gurus and uh, personality development courses and some such You cannot just decide uh, that uh, blame has to go, or resentment has to go, or negative emotions have to go, or like Eckhart Tolle, uh, be in the now. Yeah, if that was so easy to decide, I'm in the now now, and I can let go of all negative emotions and old grudges and stuff. Yeah, great, but it's not the case, it's not that easy. They even all these manifestation teachers now who say, yeah, you just have to decide that. Just let go and imagine it's all brainwashing. There's you're perfect already. Nothing has to change. You don't have to learn anything, change anything. It's good as you are. There's also a lot of truth in this, of course. You are perfect as you are and you don't have to change anything don't have to learn anything. You don't have to do 10,000 therapies and whatnot. Or take all kinds of supplements to be ready to enjoy life. But it's not that simple. It's not a decision because as long as you're asleep, you can't decide anything. If you're not awake, what can you do? I had a very interesting dream last night. I met Donald Trump. But it was a dream. So in the dream it was all uh, dream stuff. There was nothing I was able to do. There's uh, this concept of lucid dreaming, of course, which I don't recommend. But I didn't do it. So it was just the dream unfolding. There was nothing I could have changed voluntarily. Same in normal life. If you're not awake, if you're asleep, in a spiritual sense, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can decide. So you cannot decide to ignore your negative emotions or to turn them off. You cannot decide to let go of blame and grudges and resentments. It would be good, but it's not possible. So what does this do? If you listen to videos or um, audio books or podcasts where they tell you don't do the way you're doing it now, do it differently, then it strengthens exactly that what they tell you to get rid of. That's something UG said, for example. Yeah? All this searching, all this trying to be different, all this trying to do this or stopping to do that, it just strengthens the problem, which is searching in the first place. The first thing is to wake up. And what is waking up? I repeat again. Waking up is realizing that you are not your personality. Then, if you're awake and you know that you're not your personality, and the attachments and identifications fall away, then you can decide to do this or not to do that. Then the emotions will disappear by themselves because they're not attached to anything anymore. Then you can let go of your personal story. Instead of telling it again and again and again, you can just let go of it. It's just a story. Then you can be in the now. Because you're not all the time with your mind in the future and the past. Then the world stops and your internal dialogue ceases to be. Okay, you will say. But then how do I wake up? Firstly, waking up is something that happens again and again and again. People wake up, fall asleep, wake up, fall asleep. All these people who tell me about the Kundalini awakening 10 or 15 or 20 years ago... Okay, that was 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. 
it usually lasts the the awakening part of the kundalini awakening lasts one two or three days maximum after three days you will be asleep again in your bodies in your physical vital and mental body this will go on uh, the energetic awakening part with the lightnings and stuff the electrical part this will go on working on your three bodies mostly a subtle body but the awakening part will be over after a few hours or three days at the most you're not awake because you had an awakening experience 20 years ago that's a big misunderstanding so if you assume that you are awake but you're not then of course nothing can be done that's the best defense against enlightenment if you think you're already there just as with the sleep you fall asleep every night and you wake up in the morning it happens every day similar to that you have to wake up several times until you will not fall asleep in a spiritual sense meaning of the word again only because you woke up once doesn't mean anything it's just one of many experiences people are so attached to their few great experiences they had they're just experiences go on let go go on they're just experiences it doesn't matter if you had one or two great experiences don't attach yourself to them more will come if you open to it to them some people also think their transition from green to yellow or spell dynamics that's awakening it's not that's just uh, going to the next color to the next tier awakening happens again and again and again and again until the system finally got it grokked it that you're really not your personality personality is part of you but that's not who you are in essentia you're not your personality but your personality is part of you you're not only your personality and once you got that you I can enjoy life because you're not taking it seriously anymore and you're not taking your thoughts and your emotions seriously anymore you don't take your story seriously anymore and you can live more and more in the now and the babbling in your head will become less and less and less it's not one thing this we have read too much about satori and that immediate enlightenment and that's it it's not that way it's a back and forth a to and fro for a while for several years a lot of people talk about seven years after the first time the awakening is stable first it will be unstable for a few years then it will be stable then if you can maintain it for 3 5 7 years cool things will start to happen and in that time your thoughts and emotions will diminish but a lot of people don't really like that if emotions diminish yeah that's why we like dramatic movies and stuff we watch all kinds of dramatic stuff we like dramatic news and what not yeah our mind la- loves drama if this awakening and enlightenment process really starts drama will fall away so you will have to find something else to enjoy if not the drama if not the emotions the ups and downs that people think think it's cool not to have any emotions but it's actually really weird people think it uh, would be cool not to have any thoughts but it's actually really weird and your social interactions uh also really weird because you can't take the drama of others seriously anymore so you have to play a little bit carlos castaneda uh, calls this controlled folly to play as if you still had thoughts and emotions 
and if as if you were still interested in i don't know soccer or baseball or what not if you're awake meaning not identified anymore with your personality with your ego there's nothing bad about the ego but to be identified with it means you think you the ego or that part of the ego that is at the forefront right now at that moment and another moment it might be another part usually a traumatized part and uh, yeah, some people they do trauma therapy or some other therapy for years or decades and they don't or meditate for decades. That's even more common. There's not much difference. Why? Because it's not about something you can do. It's always about letting go. But you cannot just let go. You, that's another thing. You cannot just say, okay, I, I will wake up now. I will leave the prison now. That's also not possible. But just as Socrates and Jet McKenna and UG describe, or Shurabindo, you can use your mind to find out that the mind has its limits. If you use your mind and you really, really think about it hard, what can I know? What can I know for sure? Then the outcome must be, if you really go through it for days, weeks, months, as long as it takes, that you cannot know anything for sure. There's nothing you can know for sure because everything that we take for granted, that we think is sure, is based upon assumptions. If you leave out all assumptions, if you leave out everything people believe in, if you just go for the very, very hard proof, then you will arrive at some point, no matter how long it takes, that you cannot know anything for sure. And thus you cannot know anything. Because the only thing you can know is that you cannot know anything and that the mind has its limits very, very stark limits. This is called Jnana Yoga. And it can lead to awakening, but not for everyone. It's not everyone's path. Another person, another person, <laughs> another possibility is to observe yourself, to observe your own thoughts. Who's talking there? Who is talking to whom? These voices in your head. Who is that? It's like a radio, basically. There, people talking in your head. But you didn't ask them to talk. These voices in your head, they're not you. They're programs. Radio programs, TV programs, podcasts. Identified with the past or the future. So there's actually no one home there. As David Kass explained so well, there's no one home. They're just programs. There's no person in your head talking. It's definitely not you. Some people need to do it the tantric way, to over-exaggerate everything until they realize that this is not it either. It's a bit dangerous that way, but it also works for some. But to try to stop blame and resentment and negative emotions, that's back as words. That's going backwards, that's uh, putting the cart before the horse. You cannot stop something, especially if it's part of a program that keeps on running without you being able to influence it. Yeah? If there's resentment, there's resentment. Just go to people and tell them that you resent them for this and that. That will probably be better than try to stop the resentment. Everything you try to stop you try to ignore, you try to push away, you try to not see, it will become bigger and stronger. It will not go away. That's also where meditation doesn't work for most people. It, it doesn't stop the programs. It doesn't. It just pushes them under the rug and there they fester and become stronger and bigger. 
Instead, you could ask yourself, who is meditating? Who wants to meditate? Who is this thing, this person, this being, who wants to meditate, who wants to be a better human being, or who wants to save the world, and so on? Who wants to get rid of his or her, of their negative emotions? Who is that? Who wants that? Who is this who? Is there anyone at all? Or is this just another program, another guardian program? Because you have been told as a child that you have to be a good boy or a good girl or whatever. You don't have to be a good boy and good girl. That's just another program. Taught to you by people who are also run by programs. Anything that you've been told by people who are asleep is worth nothing. And most people, teachers, parents, politicians, celebrities, they're all asleep. They cannot teach you anything. You know, it's not so easy to wake up from a dream. If you have a nightmare, for example, and you want to wake up, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So, at one point, you will wake up and you will be in a completely different space. Nothing will have changed and everything will have changed. But the other stuff can easily be spiritual bypassing, be it therapies or meditation or some other practice, especially religious practices, like praying and stuff. Do it, but it will not change anything. Pray to whom? Who is praying to whom? It's a program praying to a anthropomorphized God. God is not a person who you can pray to. He, she, it doesn't answer prayers. That's not how it works. And especially not prayers by a program. If it works, then you have to wake up first. So this is the only thing. There's nothing to practice. There's nothing to learn. There's no courses you have to buy for a lot of money. It's only waking up. Before waking up has happened, it's only automatic stuff going on. There's nothing you can or cannot do. Nature is a big help and also less input. Stop listening to podcasts and videos. Even videos of this channel. Stop the input. Stop the input. Just enjoy nature and observe what's going on inside and at some point you will wake up. But if you distract yourself all the time with all kinds of green bullshit, you will not wake up. And most gurus telling you, I looked at hundreds of them, most gurus are bullshit. They're bullshito masters. There's nothing they can tell you or teach you. Even if it were possible to teach you something, they can't. They're flakes, fakes. Forget about them. The good thing is there's nothing you can do wrong. Everything you do is right, is correct. It's just your path. There's nothing to do different or faster or slower. It's fine. A good way to start is radical honesty. There's a video about it also on this channel. Just to always tell the truth. That can also help to get to weaken the programs because the programs are liars. But if you start to as a new habit to always tell the truth no matter what, even if it's to your detriment, this can really be helpful. Okay, this video was sounded too serious again. I'm sorry about that. Actually, I like to make jokes all the time, but sometimes I sound too serious. Thank you for listening. Thank you for liking, subscribing and joining me on Patreon. Thank you to all those who have already joined me on Patreon. Thank you very much.